students. Hello everyone. In today's lecture, we will be talking about the viscoelasticity of polymeric materials. In the previous lecture, we discussed uh, the mechanical properties of uh, polymers. So, uh, today what we will uh, do is uh, uh, look at uh, a characteristic property of polymeric materials uh, which is viscoelasticity and where we will see that polymeric materials uh, respond to a deformation. Uh, in a way which uh, resembles both an elastic solid and a viscous liquid. In today's lecture, the content will be uh, after an in initial introduction to viscoelasticity, we will talk uh, a bit about a couple of uh, experimental techniques uh, which are used to um, study the time dependent mechanical response of such vis viscoelastic uh, polymeric materials. And uh, then we will also look at a couple of uh, mechanical models uh, that uh, are simple, but uh, somewhat effective representation of viscoelastic uh, behavior of polymeric materials. It must be said at the outset that uh, viscoelasticity, uh, viscoelasticity of polymers is a, a complex uh, phenomena and uh, of course, it is a subject where uh, many advanced uh, texts and uh, articles are available. So, in our discussion today, we will uh, limit ourselves to very introductory uh, coverage of this viscoelastic uh, properties of polymers. When we say viscoelasticity, it uh, refers to uh, a mechanical behavior or mechanical uh, response to uh, load or a deformation, uh, where the, uh, the response actually is uh, representative of both an elastic solid and a viscous uh, liquid. So, the mechanical response of such viscoelastic materials uh, would uh, have characteristics of uh, the response of an elastic uh, solid material as well as that of a viscous liquid material. And apart from that, uh, it, it usually is not, it is not just a linear combination of uh, these two responses, but uh, can be more complicated by the fact that the elastic and viscous responses uh, themselves can be coupled in some cases. Uh, so, uh, viscoelasticity is observed in many polymeric materials uh, in most of the polymeric materials and uh, it is uh, another way to look at it is uh, uh, it is a time dependent mechanical response to uh, deformation. So, if we contrast this kind of a response uh, or behavior to uh, that of a purely elastic uh, behavior or a purely viscous behavior, then we will be able to better appreciate the, this concept. So, if we consider pure elastic response, so in a pure elastic response, if a stress is uh, um, applied, uh, uh, then the corresponding strain produced in the material is uh, directly proportional to the um, stress applied or in other words, if uh, a material is strained, the stress is um, uh, proportional to the strain uh, produced. So, that is uh, uh, that's what uh, the behavior of a purely uh, or perfectly elastic solid would be. Uh, in contrast, if we have a purely viscous liquid, so in that case the response uh, uh, to any mechanical deformation is uh, that stress uh, that is produced in the material is uh, proportional not to the strain uh, applied, but to the rate of the strain. So, the rate at which the strain is uh, changing, that is the quantity which is proportional to stress for a purely viscous substance like simple liquids. Viscoelastic response actually lies uh, intermediate to these two extreme responses and, and uh, this viscoelastic behavior and response is what we will uh, study in more detail in today's lecture. The poly polymeric materials in general exhibit uh, response to, to mechanical uh, deformation which corresponds to a viscoelastic behavior and uh, response uh, that we have, the response, uh, 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 this viscoelastic response is uh, um, uh, seen to be uh, dependent both on the time of observation as well as the temperature of observation. Okay. So, typically when we uh, um, subject a viscoelastic material like a polymeric material to some deformation or let us say um, apply some load to it to produce a deformation, then it is seen that the corresponding response of the material, uh, it, uh, it varies with time and it can vary with temperature as well. And this is something that uh, one would not see in a purely elastic solid. So, for, for an elastic solid, if a um, given uh, load is applied, uh, correspondingly a deformation will be produced, which will not vary with time as long as the load itself is not varying with time. Uh, whereas, for a viscoelastic material, uh, even if a constant uh, load is ap applied, 
the corresponding deformation produced can uh, vary with time. So, in general the response uh, uh, varies with time for viscoelastic materials and it varies with temperature as well. In the limit when the uh, time of observation is uh, short or in other words uh, when the temperature is uh, uh, low. So, in such cases the typically the elastic kind of response is um, observed in viscoelastic materials and in the other extreme when the time of observation is uh, large or when the temperature is high in that case a uh, viscous kind of response can be expected. So, this short time uh, um, behavior which can correspond to um, high rate of strain uh, applied uh, this uh, typically produces a kind of elastic response and if in the long time limit when observation is done for a, a very long time uh, that is when the strain rate uh, correspondingly is low and also at high temperatures the viscous response uh, is uh, what is observed. So, we see that the behavior of these viscoelastic polymeric materials is intermediate to that of an elastic solid and a viscous liquid. So, before we move on to discussing some simple models for this viscoelastic behavior of a polymeric materials, uh, uh, let us first uh, go ahead and uh, look at a couple of experimental techniques uh, which are uh, used to uh, study the this time dependent, dependent mechanical response of uh, the viscoelastic polymers. So, the first experimental technique that we will discuss is, uh, is this creep experiments or creep loading and here what is done is uh, the sample is subjected to a constant stress and the strain corresponding strain uh, or deformation developed in the sample that is monitored with time. So, for a given constant stress that has been applied how the corresponding strain changes with time. Before we uh, look at the behavior or response of a viscoelastic material, let us first again um, discuss how the response of a purely elastic or a purely viscous material will look like. So, if we have a purely elastic material, a perfectly elastic solid, then as soon as this constant stress is applied, uh, instantaneously a, um, a corresponding strain will be developed in the material and this strain uh, will uh, um, not change with time. So, since the stress applied is constant, the strain uh, developed will also remain constant and will not change with time. So, if we try to plot strain, so let us represent our strain by some quantity epsilon, symbol epsilon and if we wish to see how it changes with time, then since the applied stress uh, sigma is some constant value, then correspondingly the strain produced will also be a constant okay, as at some a constant value let us say epsilon naught and let us say if this uh, applied st stress is removed then instantaneously the strain in the elastic solid that will also dip disappear. Okay. So, there would not be any residual strain or deformation upon removal of the um, stress applied. So, this creep experiment uh, if uh, let us say if it is done for a perfectly elastic solid then it will just produce a constant strain because the uh, stress uh, imposed is, all, is a constant value. Uh, if we call, uh, on the other hand look at the response of a viscous liquid and how it uh, responds to uh, um, constant stress that is applied, then in that case uh, uh, the, since uh, for a liquid, a viscous liquid the stress is proportional to strain rate. So, since the stress is uh, constant in a creep experiment, the strain rate will be constant which means that the strain will uh, increase linearly with time. So, in the case of a viscous response, so this one is for elastic, for the case of a viscous, purely viscous uh, response uh, when the applied stress is constant. So, if we monitor strain as a function of time, we will see that it increases linearly and as long as the stress um, is a constant stress is applied, the strain will keep on increasing linearly. and. Uh, and if uh, let us say the stress is um, removed or the load is removed at certain point of time, then the strain will not decay to 0. The deformation that has been induced due to the application of that stress, uh, that will be permanent. So, if uh, for viscous material, if the constant stress is applied, the strain will increase linearly and if the stress is removed at a point of time, then the whatever strain or deformation that has been induced, that will remain, it will not uh, um, decay. So, uh, that is the pure uh, viscous kind of response. Uh, if you look at now a typical uh, response of a viscoelastic material, there what happens is that uh, the response uh, 
uh, again we can see as being uh, intermediate between uh, elastic and viscous response. So, so what we will see is that as the uh, constant stress is applied to a viscoelastic material, uh, the strain actually uh, increases with time, but the increase is uh, not linear. So, unlike a viscous, uh, purely viscous material, for a viscoelastic uh, material, the strain increase uh, will be there, but it will be non-linear with, uh, with time. Uh, so, the strain will increase uh, um, with uh, the applied stress, but the increase is not necessarily linear and if the strain is uh, stress is removed, in that case the strain can decay, in this case uh, there would not be uh, a complete permanent deformation of the material. So, due to the elastic part, part of the strain uh, deformation uh, uh, that will uh, decay uh, if the stress is removed. Uh, but uh, the 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 strain need not decay to a zero value. So the original, again the shape of the material need not be uh, recovered, and pa partly permanent deformation might be uh, there in the material. So if we now try to plot this change uh, of strain with time for a constant applied stress that is uh, uh, in the case of a creep loading. Then for a viscoelastic material, typically the change in strain with time will look something like this. It uh, uh, Initially it will increase, uh, the strain will increase uh, at a higher rate and as time progresses the rate uh, of change of strain actually itself decreases. So, so d epsilon dt actually will decrease uh, with time. Uh, but the strain itself will grow with time as long as the constant stress uh, has been applied. If the stress is removed, then in that case uh, the um, strain will uh, decay or start decreasing, but it need not reach 0. Okay. So, some permanent deformation uh, might be there even if the stress is removed. This is uh, the kind of viscoelastic response that one uh, gets for uh, simple polymers subjected to creep load. and uh, and this kind of a loading is important, studying this kind of a mechanical response uh, for polymers is important because there are many applications uh, in which uh, the polymeric material might be subjected to, um, uh, subject to a certain constant load and it is important to know uh, what, uh, how the deformation in the polymer takes place uh, if it is subjected to a certain amount of load for long period of time. So, that is why the creep uh, measurements are important. Another class of experiments that is important again from the point of view of this uh, uh, time dependent mechanical response of uh, uh, polymeric materials is what is called the stress relaxation experiments. So, um, in contrast to the creep experiments where the stress is maintained constant, uh, in the stress rel relaxation experiments the uh, a constant strain is maintained. So, the material is uh, strained by a certain amount and that constant strain is maintained and the stress required to maintain that constant strain that is monitored. So, that is it is seen how that stress changes with time. So, for a stress relaxation experiment uh, a constant strain is applied and the corresponding stress that is monitored with time. Again if we talk about a purely elastic solid, so we first let us uh, look at that limit uh, what happens uh, when the stress relaxation kind of uh, condition is imposed on a purely elastic solid. So, for such a solid. Uh, if we apply a constant strain, then immediately a corresponding constant stress will, will uh, develop and uh, as long as this constant strain is applied, the same constant uh, stress will be uh, present. Okay. So, for a constant strain uh, that is applied, the stress will remain constant with time and, uh, and let us say if strain is removed at certain point of time, then this stress will again instantaneously become 0. So, that is the response that one, one will get from a purely elastic solid again and uh, we are talking about the response of, of purely elastic uh, or purely viscous material just to con contrast it with that of a viscoelastic material and to emphasize the fact that the viscoelastic uh, response typically is intermediate to these two, but it is not necessarily a linear combination of these two and uh, it can be a uh, more complex coupling of uh, the elastic and viscous response. So, now if we try to again draw the change in stress with time. So, now since the uh, strain has been maintained constant at let us some value epsilon equal to epsilon naught, then uh, for a purely elastic response the corresponding stress will also stay constant with time, it will not change vary with time 
and if at some point of time the strain is removed the stress will also um, come down to 0 again. Uh, if uh, we have a purely viscous material then uh, since a constant strain is applied uh, uh, there is no strain rate the, the strain is not changing with time so correspondingly there would not be any stress. So, initially as the constant strain is uh, applied at that very instant a uh, sharp spike in, in the stress might be observed, but immediately it will decay to 0 because the strain remains constant after that. So, strain rate is 0 and stress also will be 0. Uh, if we now look at the uh, response of a viscoelastic material, so in that case what happens is uh, as strain is um, constant strain is applied the stress that develops in a material that uh, um, slowly decays to 0. So, and the stress actually for a typical viscoelastic polymers does not decay all the way to 0, it will decay to a small value, but some residual stress might still be present even after long times. So, if we look at the viscoelastic response uh, as we discussed stress decays with time, uh, but the stress need not relax completely what that means is that the stress need not go all the way to 0 um, even at long times. So, if we again draw sigma versus time or stress versus time with uh, if a constant strain is applied uh, as is done in a stress relaxation experiment. So, the stress uh, will at some initially will be at some some value and it will decay with time, but even after long times uh, some residual stress might might be present. So, so this is the kind of behavior where when a constant strain is present. So, it is not that the uh, strain um, has been removed at any point of time even in the presence of a constant strain throughout the stress uh, in the material actually reduces with time decreases with time unlike an elastic material where the stress remains constant with time. So, here the stress reduces with time and but uh, even at the long time some residual stress might still be present. So, that is a viscoelastic response. So, these are couple of important experimental uh, measurements uh, done to characterize the mechanical response of viscoelastic material especially the time dependent mechanical response. Some other kind of uh, um, experiments are also typically done where uh, the material is exposed to um, some kind of an oscillating stress or strain where the stress or strain might be varying sinusoidally with time and the corresponding uh, response of the material is observed. So, such uh, experiments uh, basically come under the um, class of dynamic mechanical experiments and in the next lecture we will briefly look at um, some of the su some such uh, experiments and the corresponding mechanical response of polymers under oscillating um, strain or stress conditions. But today uh, from here what we will do is move on to the discussion of a few simple mechanical models of uh, viscoelasticity. We will restrict ourselves to uh, what is called linear viscoelasticity in, in that uh, whatever elastic and viscous uh, <coughs> response that we are considering to and combining to give the viscoelastic response, the individual uh, uh, elastic and viscous responses themselves will be considered linear and um, direct linear kind of combination of these two responses uh, will be assumed to describe the viscoelastic behavior of uh, the material. So, this kind of linear viscoelasticity f normally is uh, valid only when the applied strain or deformation is quite small and as the strain or deformation becomes large this linear kind of uh, uh, this linear assumption will fail. So, uh, since we our discussion is limited to simple cases and simple systems we will talk only about uh, models describing linear viscoelasticity. So, the assumptions involved here uh, in this linear viscoelasticity is that or the mechanical models that we will be discussing is that the po uh, deformation of the polymer consists of ind independent contribution from elastic uh, uh, an elastic uh, kind of a response and a viscous kind of a response. So, an elastic and viscous component will in independently contribute to the overall response of the viscoelastic polymer material. And uh, uh, another simplification that we will make is that uh, all the deformation of the this viscoelastic uh, material that will be uh, described by a combination of uh, Hooke's law uh, which is valid for uh, linear elastic materials and, and Newton's law which is valid for uh, linear viscous materials. So, we will combine these two mathematical simple mathematical laws uh, and um, and try to describe the behavior of uh, viscoelastic uh, materials. So, if we talk about Hooke's law, this is something that we discussed in the previous lecture as well. It is a, um, a simple law that just relates the stress to the strain um, uh, through a, a linear kind of relationship. 
So, Hooke's law states that the any uh, stress is proportional to strain and this proportionality constant E is referred to as the elastic modulus. So, if, if the stress strain that we are talking about are the tensile um, stress or strain, typically this E will be the corresponding Young's modulus. If we are talking about a shear um, stress or shear strain, then even in that case if we, uh, we can talk about a kind of Hooke's law that linearly re relates the shear stress to shear strain and in that case the elastic modulus will be the corresponding shear modulus. So, here the E that we have it is we are not limiting it to any particular um, specific modulus, but uh, depending on the type of deformation involved uh, it can be the elastic uh, Young's modulus for tensile kind of deformation or it can be the shear modulus for a shear kind of deformation. So, we uh, know that this Hooke's law describes linear elastic behaviors. So, of course, our models will only be only be valid uh, where um, this linear kind of uh, behavior is, um, is um, expected to be valid. Similarly, for uh, a purely viscous kind of a behavior, um, one can use a Newton's law which again describes a kind of linear uh, viscous behavior and here the stress is uh, proportional to the strain rate. Okay. So, rate at which the strain epsilon is changing with time that is uh, uh, what the stress depends on and the proportionality con uh, this proportionality constant in this case that is referred to as the viscosity of the material. So, so the corresponding symbols are epsilon sigma stress and strain uh, e is the elastic modulus eta is the viscosity. Uh, the aim of uh, 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 for the any of the simple uh, mechanical models is to try to combine these two uh, simple laws describing uh, linear elasticity and linear viscous behavior and uh, to come up with a um, combination that can give a reasonable description of viscoelastic behavior. In the mechanical models of viscoelasticity that we will talk about the elastic uh, component or elastic element is typically represented by what is called a Hookean spring. So, a kind of a spring uh, which has a constant uh, elastic modulus uh, E. The viscous element uh, will have a constant viscosity eta and the viscous element is actually is normally represented by what is called a dash pot which is, um, uh, which is uh, a kind of a damper kind of a system which containing a liquid having a viscosity eta. So, <coughs> typically these mechanical models uh, comprise uh, spring as elastic element uh, and uh, simple dash pot as a viscous element. We will uh, talk about a couple of uh, these uh, simple mechanical models and and what we will see is that the combination of the viscous element and the elastic element in, in different ways that can uh, give us these different models and correspondingly that can produce uh, different kinds of responses. And then we can see how will the response of these models uh, compare with the response of uh, actual viscoelastic polymers. So, if we um, connect our elastic element which is a spring and the viscous element which is a dash pot in series. So, that is what gives us uh, the Maxwell model of viscoelasticity or Maxwell model of linear viscoelasticity. So, if we uh, typically the spring will be represented by something like this and then we will have a kind of a dash pot that is represented by this symbol and, and these two combine in series and this spring will have the elastic modulus E. The liquid inside the dash part will have viscosity eta. So, this combination is, uh, is uh, what is called the Maxwell model of viscoelasticity. So, a uh, elastic uh, element and the viscous element uh, combine in series. So, now let us say uh, for this model if uh, overall stress sigma is applied and correspondingly uh, uh, overall strain epsilon is produced, then uh, what we can say is that the sigma uh, overall st uh, stress uh, will be equal to the stress in the uh, elastic element that is the spring and that will also be equal to the stress in the uh, viscous element which is the dash pot. So, sigma 1 sigma 2 represent the stress in the spring and dash pot similarly epsilon 1 epsilon 2 represent the strain in the spring and dash pot. So, epsilon um, uh, in this case will be additive because the system the two elements are in series. So, the the strains produced in the individual elements epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 when they are added they will give that will give the overall strain produced in this uh, entire Maxwell say, uh, model. Okay. Whereas, the stress the overall stress that is applied uh, 
that will be identical to the individual stresses present in the two elements because of the fact that the two are in series or assumed to be in series. So, if we start with uh, these considerations uh, which is due to the fact that we are using a series model, then uh, we can uh, for the sigma which corresponds to the elastic element we can describe it by the Hooke's law and uh, uh, sigma 1 that is and sigma 2 which is uh, the uh, viscous element that can be described by the Newton's law of viscosity. So, if we do that uh, sigma 1 we can write as uh, capital E times uh, epsilon 1 where E is the elastic modulus and uh, this we can just rewrite uh, um, as epsilon 1 equal to sigma by E and here we have removed the subscript 1 from sigma because uh, we see that sigma and sigma 1 they are the same they are equal. Uh, similarly, for the viscous element we can um, write the Newton's law and again rearrange that and again instead of sigma 2 we have just written sigma here and removed the subscript because sigma 2 is also equal to sigma. Now, we have uh, these two expressions using these two expressions and um, differentiating this expression with respect to time and by combining all of them we will uh, develop the equation for the Maxwell model. So, first let us uh, differentiate this expression with respect to time. So, if we do that we get uh, uh, that the rate of change of overall strain is just the uh, sum of the rate of change of strains in the two elements and uh, this first one uh, d epsilon 1 dt that we can obtain from the Hooke's law expression directly by uh, simple differentiation and this uh, second term here is directly given by the Newton's law for the viscous element. So, if we um, combine the two then this is the expression that we get and this uh, first term as we discussed comes by just differentiating this expression and the second term is what we have on the right hand side here. So, this is the equation describing the Maxwell model of linear viscoelasticity. And next uh, let us try and see how this model um, how good is this model in predicting the mechanical response of actual viscoelastic polymers. Okay. So, uh, for the Maxwell model let us first see uh, under creep kind of condition or creep loading condition uh, what, what kind of prediction does the Maxwell model give and whether that is an acceptable kind of prediction or not. So, uh, for creep behavior uh, we know that uh, constant stress sigma naught is imposed on the system. So, if we start with our equation for the Maxwell model that we discussed in the previous slide, then since uh, the stress now is constant at sigma naught, uh, this uh, time derivative of stress under creep condition will be 0. So, the Maxwell model will simply reduce to uh, this uh, equation here and instead of sigma we have written sigma naught uh, because uh, the stress um, is kept constant during a creep experiment. And we see that this uh, rate of uh, change of strain with time that uh, comes out to be a constant um, from, from Maxwell model. So, Maxwell model predicts that the strain will uh, um, increase at a linear rate uh, with time. Okay. So, d dt is a positive constant and uh, this kind of prediction is actually poor prediction uh, for the creep behavior of actual uh, polymeric materials. So, if I draw this uh, the kind of prediction that we are getting from this equation epsilon versus strain versus time, then Maxwell model is predicting uh, behavior like this where epsilon is uh, increasing linearly with time. So, this is the Maxwell model prediction and the actual uh, creep experiments done on the, the uh, viscoelastic polyunic materials the, the response produced in such cases is where this uh, actually uh, epsilon is increasing with time, but the rate of increase of epsilon that actually reduces rate time. So, initially the rate at which epsilon increases is high and later on it um, goes down. So, this Maxwell model is uh, not a very good model for predicting creep behavior of poly, uh, uh, viscoelastic materials. And let, next, next let us just see how will it predicts the stress relaxation behavior. So, we know that in the stress relaxation experiments the uh, constant strain is imposed in the system and uh, the relaxation of the stress or how the stress is changing with time that is monitored. So, in stress relaxation we will uh, say that epsilon is being kept at epsilon not a constant value and then again starting with the Maxwell model equation 
if we substitute uh, this constant value of uh, strain here, then this term actually becomes 0 because the strain is constant, so it will not change. So, in that case, uh, the expression reduces to this and which can uh, we can easily rearrange uh, in the form of uh, this uh, where we have separated the terms uh, containing sigma uh, and taken it to one side and the remaining terms are on the other side. So, this uh, equation now can be simply integrated um, and integration and again um, simplification will lead to a final expression that looks something like this. So, that the time dependence stress that actually is given by um, constant stress value sigma naught which is the initial stress multiplied by an exponential uh, of minus t by tau naught. Okay. So, we see an exponential kind of decay of this uh, stress with time in the prediction of Maxwell model. Here uh, before we actually see how this uh, stress relaxation behavior looks like for a Maxwell model, let us uh, talk about uh, this tau naught. So, <coughs> upon comparison one can say upon comparison with uh, especially this term, one what one can say is that this tau naught is uh, nothing but this ratio of viscosity and the elastic modulus eta by E and uh, for the, uh, this is the relaxation time for the Maxwell model and what it uh, signifies is that if we are talking about time scales much smaller than the relaxation time, then uh, at those time scales Maxwell model uh, will behave like an elastic solid and, and if the time scales involved are much larger than the relaxation time, then the viscous kind of behavior will be more dominant for the Maxwell model. So, that is the significance of uh, the relaxation time that we have. Uh, the sigma naught that we have here that is just the initial stress at t equal to 0 and that we can write as just uh, uh, the elastic modulus times the strain uh, uh, which is constant in, in the case of uh, stress relaxation experiment. So, if, if I plot uh, again stress versus time, so in a stress relaxation experiment strain is constant, stress is, way, um, stress is monitored with time. So, what we will see is that the Maxwell model predicts a kind of exponential decay with time and at long enough times uh, or at almost time tending to infinity the stress will decay to 0. Okay. So, what we see is that this stress relaxation behavior, uh, this behavior actually uh, as described by the Maxwell model is uh, somewhat similar or uh, to a first approximation it can capture the kind of trend and behavior shown by actual uh, uh, viscoelastic polymers. So, so, what we can conclude is that for Maxwell model the stress relaxation predictions are reasonable, the prediction uh, of creep uh, kind of experiments they are uh, not acceptable. Okay. So, the creep uh, um, predictions are poor whereas the stress relaxation pre predictions are um, reasonably okay. So, in the Maxwell model the two elements are combine, combined in series. So, in the previous case we had uh, combined them in series. Now, the natural uh, alternative would be to see what happens if uh, the two elements are combined in parallel and that is what the second mechanical model that we will be studying uh, talks about. So, in this model which is referred to as the Kelvin white model or many times it is also referred to simply as the white model of uh, linear risk elasticity. So, here uh, the elastic element or that is the spring and the viscous element that is a dash part they are arranged in parallel. So, in Maxwell uh, they, had, they, are, they were arranged in series, now here they are arranged in parallel. So, uh, now based on again this arrangement let us see, uh, so you, uh, the arrangement uh, schematically one can represent uh, something like this. So, again the spring will have elastic modulus e, uh, En, the dashboard will contain a fluid having viscosity eta. So, this is the kind of arrangement that we have in the Kelvin white model and based on this arrangement we can again uh, try to um, establish uh, or ident identify the relations between the overall stress and strain and the corresponding stress and strain in the individual elements. Okay. So, if we do that uh, in this case since the arrangement in par is in parallel the overall stress actually will be the sum of the stress in the first and the second element whereas the overall strain uh, in uh, um, will be equal to the strains in the individual elements. So, epsilon will be equal to epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 because they are in parallel. So, any strain produced overall strain that will be uh, uh, the same as the strain produced in the individual elements. So, the nomenclature is the same as before and again we can apply the Hooke's law for the elastic element and Newton's law for the uh, viscous element. So, if we do that 
uh, Hooke's law gives us sigma 1 equal to the elastic modulus times epsilon 1 which we can just write as capital E times epsilon dropping the subscript because epsilon and epsilon 1 are equal. Similarly, uh, for the viscous element Newton's law of viscosity can be written. So, sigma 2 we can write as eta d epsilon d t again the subscript 2 has been dropped here because epsilon 2 is also equal to epsilon. Okay. So, if we uh, combine these two, so now the overall stress we see is, is the sum of the individual stresses sigma 1 and sigma 2. So, using this equation in combination with the Hooke's and the Newton's law, what we can do is write them together and that gives the overall stress as uh, the stress in the elastic element plus the stress in the viscous element and just rearranging the terms, uh, we, we get the typical equation that is there for this Kelvin white model. And here the rate of strain or strain uh, ch change in strain with time that uh, d epsilon dt that is equal to sigma by eta minus uh, this um, elastic modulus e times epsilon which is the strain divided by again eta. So, this is the Kelvin white model equation and again let us see how this model uh, now predicts the um, um, response uh, uh, when under creep conditions and under stress relaxation conditions. So, if we first look at the uh, creep uh, behavior uh, as predicted by Kelvin white model, so under creep conditions the stress is maintained constant at sigma naught and if we use the Kelvin white model equation here, then this uh, stress sigma that will be uh, equal to a constant value sigma naught in this case and if we do that and rearrange the terms, the equation that we get is of this uh, type. And we can see that this is actually an uh, ordinary differential equation of first order in epsilon. This kind, these kind of equations can be easily solved by the integrating factor technique. So, if the um, this equation is solved, then the corresponding epsilon uh, as a function of time is obtained um, as this expression. So, here tau naught is the relaxation time, uh, which is again eta by e and uh, sigma naught is the constant st stress applied during uh, creep experiments. So, we see that if we look at this equation and see uh, how it describes the creep response, then we see that at time t equal to 0, if time t is 0, then epsilon will come out to be 0 in this case because at t equal to 0 the exponential term this term will be 1. So, the bracketed term will become 0 and the corresponding strain will also be 0. So, at t equal to 0 the strain will be 0 and as uh, time increases the strain will increase, uh, but not linearly uh, it will uh, increase in a kind of exponential fashion. So, if we draw again the change of strain with time, so in a creep experiment how uh, strain, uh, corresponding strain is changing with time, then the Kelvin white model actually predicts a uh, kind of behavior that looks like this. So, we see that at least the Kelvin white model is able to uh, predict the fact that the uh, strain is not linearly increasing with time, but it is uh, um, the rate of increase of strain with time actually decreases at, as time progresses. So, uh, uh, in initial part the strain increases um, rapidly with time, but as uh, time progresses the rate at which the strain is increasing that also slows down and ultimately uh, tries to reach a constant value. So, uh, what we can comment here is that the Kelvin white model uh, gives a better prediction of the creep behavior of a uh, viscoelastic polymers than the Maxwell model. If we on the other hand try to see how the stress relaxation behavior is predicted by the Kelvin white model and uh, noting that in the stress relaxation experiments the strain is maintained constant at epsilon naught. Again, then again if we write down the Kelvin white model equation and <coughs> identify this term to be 0 because uh, the strain is now constant. So, in this case uh, the equation uh, simply reduces to this and this epsilon has been changed to epsilon naught due to the constant strain and if we rearrange the terms ultimately we get uh, sigma equal to uh, the elastic modulus times epsilon naught. So, Kelvin white model actually predicts the stress to be a constant. Okay. Uh, which is a purely elastic kind of response. So, we see that uh, under stress relaxation conditions, the Kelvin white does not capture the viscoelastic response at all, it just uh, predicts the elastic kind of response. So, if I draw the stress versus time here, 
then in that case uh, Kelvin wide model thus just predicts a constant value of stress uh, with the value being equal to uh, the elastic modulus times the constant strain imposed. So, this prediction from Kelvin white model is actually quite poor because it does not uh, describe the stress relaxation behavior in actual viscoelastic polymers at all where the stress actually decays with time. So, overall what we can say is that the Maxwell model uh, is uh, provides a, a decent description of the stress relaxation behavior of uh, viscoelastic polymers, uh, whereas it fails to uh, capture the creep behavior properly. On the other hand, the uh, Kelvin white model captures the, um, uh, um, the creep um, behavior of viscoelastic materials to, to a good approximation. However, it completely uh, is unable to capture the stress relaxation behavior. So, both models uh, have their um, advantages and disadvantages. Uh, so, a natural extension of this uh, these mechanical models can be to somehow combine these two um, uh, models the Maxwell and the Kelvin white model in such a way that uh, both the uh, creep uh, response as well as the stress relaxation response uh, are um, captured uh, to uh, a good approximation uh, <coughs> for viscoelastic materials. So, one such combination that has been produced is uh, proposed is what is called the standard linear model in that uh, what is done is uh, to a Maxwell element. So, Maxwell element will, will uh, actually include a elastic spring and um, viscous dash, dash part in series. So, if, if we consider these two uh, together in series and if we add another spring to it in parallel. So, in that case uh, this, uh, this represents a, a standard linear model and this kind uh, this addition of this parallel spring or a parallel elastic element to the uh, um, the Maxwell model that actually leads to uh, an improvement in the prediction of uh, creep behavior by this model. So, this uh, standard linear model is uh, um, a relatively simple model which can capture both the stress relaxation and creep behavior. Of course, uh, if we, we can um, combine more elements in uh, different kind of fashions to create more uh, uh, types of mechanical models uh, and of course, as we increase the number of uh, components in the model, the mathematical complexity increases. A general kind of model is what is called the mechanical model is what is called the generalized Maxwell model, where uh, many um, the Maxwell elements are actually combined in are combined in parallel. So, uh, ma a Maxwell element which is a uh, elastic and a viscous uh, elements in series, many of them are combined in parallel to uh, create a generalized Maxwell model. Okay. So, so many such uh, mechanical models are there uh, and uh, they have utility up to a certain point in that they can um, uh, describe the mechanical uh, uh, response of polymers. Uh, uh, but uh, an, a shortcoming of these models is that since the models have been developed from uh, uh, purely from by mechanical considerations, so there is no molecular insight present. So, these models actually cannot uh, give any information about uh, the molecular level uh, rearrangements happening in the polymer uh, and uh, what are such rearrangements or relaxations that correspondingly, correspondingly produce a viscoelastic response. So, and no molecular level insight can be gained from this uh, purely mechanical model. So, that is one disadvantage. So, we will conclude this lecture here uh, where we have studied uh, two uh, very simple mechanical models of viscoelasticity uh, or rather linear viscoelasticity. And in the next class what we will do is uh, or in the next lecture what we will do is uh, uh, talk a little bit about uh, uh, the response of uh, or viscoelastic response uh, to um, oscillatory um, St uh, stress or strain uh, being imposed on the system. So, if we have a sinusoidal stress or strain, uh, what kind of res viscoelastic response it can produce and that com comes under the domain of uh, dynamic uh, mechanical experiments or dynamic mechanical analysis. We will look at that um, in the next lecture and we will also briefly take a look at the fact that uh, the polymeric liquids like uh, solutions and melts when they are flowing they typically do not show Newtonian behavior and many times the behavior is uh, uh, non-Newtonian. So, the stress is not uh, linearly related to the rate of strain. So, we will uh, look at the non-Newtonian behavior of this polymeric uh, liquids uh, um, in some detail as well in the next lecture. Thank you.